First Chronicles 15, verse 17. David's got right. He's got the right way to bring the ark. He's preparing. So the Levites appointed Haman, the son of Joel, and his brethren, Asaph, the son of Micaiah, and the sons of Moriah, their brethren, Ethan, the son of Cushiah. So there is Heman, one, Asaph, two, and Ethan. These are the three main men. Now let's look at Heman real quick. Uh, chapter 6, verse 3. These men are, are important. Chapter 6, verse 3. First Chronicles 6, 3. It says, The children of Amram, Aaron, Moses, Miriam, the sons of Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, Ithamar. Those are the priest families. Okay? Now, I'll look at the we want to look at now verse 33. First Chronicles 6, 33. We're looking at the priests. The priest family throughout this chapter. And these are the waited, that waited with their children, the sons of the Kohathites. These are the ones that would carry the instruments on their shoulders. Of the sons of the Kohathites, he meant a singer. All right, that's our man there, he meant a singer. The son of Joel, there he is. The son of Shimula. The son of Elkina. All right, keeping your place there. Let's go to 1 Samuel 1.1. And I'll show you something. This man that shows up in Chronicles. Who cares about Chronicles? Then you missed the whole Bible. 1 Samuel 1 1. I can't turn the page. There it goes. 1 Samuel 1 1. Now, there was a certain man of Ramoth Zopha, Zophim, of Mount Ephraim. The name was Elkina, the son of Jehoram. The son of Elihu, the son of Tophet, the son of Zeus, the Nephraimite. All right. So when we come back over to First Chronicles six thirty-three, which I just lost, pull my finger out. With First Samuel, I mean nine, up down, upside down six. Thirty-three. We see him is the son of Joel, the son of Shimua, the son of Elkiah. That Shimua and Elkiah, that's Samuel. That Heman. And I suppose he's some kind of creature that you can buy uh, his toy or something. Some kind of, we call it, superhero kind of thing. But in the Bible, this man is the grandson of Samuel. Or great-grandson. one, A grandson or great-grandson. Samuel was a priest. And Samuel was alive during the time of David. Samuel is the one that anointed David. So David was sent him, and we're looking at the singers, we're looking at the ones to be, these are the ones that would sing and praise God. They're all males. There's none female in the, in the group. Kind of interesting. Church choirs for the Lord have males and females. The Bible doesn't. It's just, it's just the Bible, black and white. 66 books. We're Bible believers, King James Bible believers. Got a problem? You got a problem with God. There it is. Plain and simple. So the Levites appointed He Man, there's the grandson or great grandson of Samuel, the son of Joel, and his brethren, Asaph. We're going to look at him in a moment. He's a very important figure when it comes to the Levites and singing. We'll, we'll deal with him about verse 19. The son of Bekiah, the son of Merari, that's one of the sons of Levi. I believe he gets the charge of the, the, the cords and the tents and uh, the linen. I believe that's his thing. But he's one of the, the chief Levites. And their brother in Ethan, the son of Kahashua. And with them, their brethren. So the brethren of Heman, the, the brethren of Asaph, and the, the brethren of Ethan, which are all Levites. Brothers, uncles, nephews of the second decree. That second 
Oh, and not to say the decree is the first time that word shows up in the Bible. So where do you think when you get these mystery religions, they get, I'm of the 10th degree, I'm of the 32 degree. They stole it from the order of the singers of the Levites, because they're the first degree. And that's not temperature. There were different degrees that David set up as the singers in their positions. And it is stolen and carried over into these secret societies the higher you go. It's amazing what, what is stolen out of the Bible. Zechariah, Ben. Now, just to let you know, Ben as a Hebrew name means son. Jaziel, Shemarimoth, and Jahio, Unai, Aleb, and Beniah, that would be son of Aniah, Mathathith, Mathaniah, Elphalithic, Machania, Obedium. There's all kinds of Obediums. Now, is this the Obedium that the Ark is in? Uh, chapter number. Chapter 13, verse 13, says, Obedim the Giddite. And that's from Gad. So I, I don't know. If this says Obedim, we don't get, we're not given a name. Obedim and Jeril the porters. What's a porter? Well, let's go to John chapter 10, verse 1. Let's ask Jesus. Jesus, what's a, what's a definition in your word? John chapter 10, verse 1. A porter. And when we see this word porter, and we look to Jesus, we're also talking about something about Jesus Christ. Now, the porter is not Jesus Christ. But let's look at the porter. John chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, it's important, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and his sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. We're dealing with names and chronicles. There's a door. There's a porter. The porter's in charge of opening up that door. And Jesus will go further to say, verse 9, I am the door. All right? So you have Jesus saying, I am the door. There's a porter. His job is opening the door. Come back over to Chronicles. Come back over to Chronicles. In verse 18, Jehiel, the porters. And we're talking about the ark of God. And in verse 24, it says, two places, doorkeepers of the ark and doorkeepers of the ark. All right. Now, I don't know if this is the holy place we're talking about in verse 24 with the porters. Because no one was in allowed that holy place unless you're a Levite. We're looking at the Levites. But the priests were allowed in that holy place. So here is a door before the Ark of the Covenant. David has signed men to stand there at the door, Levites. They're called porters. John chapter 10, Jesus says those porters open up the door. They would open them probably for the priest. The Day of Atonement. That would be the only day they opened that door. Well, if the man calling the porter opens the door and Jesus is the one that's calling, who is sitting there at the mercy seat and who is that door according to John chapter 10? Jesus Christ. And throughout the Bible, the Bible says that God meeteth between the cherubim the mercy seat. God is Jesus. Jesus Christ is, is God. And we're running right to John chapter 10. These are the sheep the people we're speaking about right now. And David the king has set up men before that door. And John chapter 10 tells us they open and close the door. And who is the door? It's Jesus. So in First Boring Chronicles 15, we see a grandson of Samuel, and we see Jesus Christ, the only entrance to get to that ark. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. 
No man comes unto the Father but by me. When you look at Israel in the Old Testament, the only way to get access to God is into that holy, most holy place, which are done by porters. So the singers, verse 19, hey man, Asaph. Now we're going to look at him a little bit. We just saw his name in verse 17, chapter 6, verse 39. He's an important name of a boring book, I guess you would people say. 639. And his brother Asaph, this is of Gershom, who stood on his right hand, even Asaph, the son of Berkiah, the son of Shimeon. So this man is on the right hand of David the singer, verse 33. There, verse 33, we already read. There's Kohites, there's Heman, chapter 39, there's Gershom. And chapter 44 is uh, Merari, Ethan. So those three names I gave you, Kohath, Gershom, and Merari. David set up the three main men with the three main children of Levi. David knew what he was doing. David had of God and the word of God. So, 2 Chronicles 29.30. 2 Chronicles 29.30. Another thing we learn about Asaph. 2 Chronicles 29.30. We're away. We're into Hezekiah now. A king that did right, got right, had a revival, cleans up the temple. And he's going to get the temple service back according to David. Moreover, Hezekiah the king. And the princes commanded the Levites to sing praises unto the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. Oh, look at that. Asaph is a prophet. And they sang pra praises with gladness. So Asaph is associated with the worship, the instruments, the singing, the words that we find in the Bible. Uh, 1 Chronicles 25, 1. 1 Chronicles 25, 1. David's the one that sets up the singing. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated the service of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jeduthim, who should prophesy, there's your seer, with harps, with psalteries, with cymbals, and the number of the workmen according to the service was, and then the whole long list we'll get to eventually. So there was an order. And not only did they gave God the glory, but their hymns and their songs were about the coming Messiah. Oh, what great things God will do for Israel. Prophecy. As much as we say today, Jesus is coming, they would praise, they would sing hymns about the coming Messiah. Prophecy. And then one interesting fact is we're going to look, we can skim right through this. Uh, an interesting note about Asaph, Psalms chapter 50. Now, I hope your Bible's got this. Some Bibles don't have this. They don't. It's missing. A great thing. Psalms 50. Kind of verse 1. You see what kind of? If you have your notes under the Psalms in your Bible, it says a Psalm of Asaph. There he is. He wrote this. You find Asaph accredited to some of the Psalms. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Psalm 72 is given to Solomon. Psalm 73. Hopefully you, you, you got these. When these marks under Psalm, read them with your Bible too because they're interesting notes. Psalm 73, a Psalm of Asaph. Psalm 74, a mischial, mischial, it's an instruction of Asaph. Psalm 76, to the chief musician on Nigarov, a psalm or song of Asaph. 
Psalm 77, to the chief musician Jedidoth, a psalm of Asaph. Psalm 78, Mishkul of Asaph. Look at that. You, you ever wonder, what are these things right here? They are, Psalm 79. A psalm of Asaph, going all the way back to when David set up the singing. Verse chapter 80, chapter 81, chapter 82. And I believe 83 is the last one. Yep. There he is. Those are the, the hymns that, I mean the hymns, yeah, the hymns, the psalms I just gave you. He is the writer of them songs. And Psalms was is your song book in the Bible that they would sing. Psalms 50, 73, 74, to all the way to 83, they were psalms and hymns that were sung by Asa. And he would say, open up to my, and they would, those would praise God. And you go back to study him and read them on what the temple worship was. And you'll find him and Heman and Asaph and Ethan. You find them throughout the Bible in reference to the singing and glorifying God. Verse 19, so the singers, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan were appointed to sound the cymbals and brass. You will not ever find a drum in the worship service. And Zechariah and Ezio and Shimmerath and Jahil and Unai, Eleb, Mesera and Benaniah with psalteries and alama. Now these names have been repeated again. Just these verses. All right, the names are given and then David records their names and what they're in charge of. And alama. Psalms 46 verse 1 is a musical term. Alama. It's all, I don't understand music that much. That's Psalms 46 verse 1. Mattanai and Alpha and Mykena and Obadiah, Obadiah, excuse me, and Jael and Azareth, we already read these names, with harps, the Shimonath to excel. Now that Shimon means the eighth. Psalm 6 1, Psalms 12 1. It's a music, some don't know if it's a musical sheet. They don't think it's a musical instrument. It means D8. And if you, octave, I think that's the name. So if you know something about music, you know something about the eighth. And you got uh, Beethoven's eighth sympathy. You got this sympathy. Of eighth is a new beginning in the Bible. The number eight, a new beginning. And Chenaniah, chief of the Levites, we're dealing with all Levites, was for song, and he instructed about song, so he would be a song leader. Because he was skillful. And how many churches will call up a song leader that doesn't even know what he's doing? Now, I haven't been, I have not been in a church like that. I mean, I know men who do, who love classical music or into classical music. I know people who have looked at, when they choose a hymn, they particularly choose it with prayer and all that. But here's a man, he's skillful, and he, he instructed. So when he would bring a new hymn before, he would make sure they know what they were singing, how to sing it, and get it right before they would do it. He was skilled. He knew musical talent. And Bechaniah and Elkina were doorkeepers. That's the first place and the last place. Two places in 23 and 24. Those are the only two places doorkeepers. And that's a kind of funny word because that's one of those words they use with the magic and dungeons and get the beautiful maiden and fight the dragons kind of dark games. You got to get through the doorkeeper. Yet it's a Bible word. It's only in two places and right here, dealing with the Levites again. Doorkeepers of the ark. That would have to be standing in the holy place. Because there's only one place for that ark, and that's in the most holy place. And there's only one person go in there once a year, twice. Once for his sins, and then once for the sins of the nation of Israel, the Day of Atonement. These guys are not going to step in where the ark is. So, 
going upon what David has set up until the temple was built by Solomon, under David between Solomon is you would the priests would go in there and trim the candle. How you guys go how you guards doing? Doing fine. Need anything? No, we're all set. Excuse me while I do these candles. Hey, you want to move over a little bit? I gotta burn some incense right now. It's the time of the incense. Hey, how you guys doing? Just putting the bread out. It's the Sabbath already? It's the Sabbath. All right. Now you know. Well, I don't know, because when Uzziah is is king and he enters into the holy place to burn that incense for himself, somebody goes tells the priest, and they got the 80 priests it was. But I don't, I don't see any doorkeepers anywhere else. You'll find them outside the holy place, not the between the most holy place. Doorkeepers for the ark. So they have to be in the holy place. And Shebaniah and Josephat, that's not the king. And Nathaniel and Amasa, that's not the king. And Zechariah, that's not the prophet. And Benaniah and Eliezer. See, there's a lot of Eliezers in the Bible. The priests did blow with trumpets before the ark of God. So you've got singing going on. You've got courses of singing on by professionals who are doing it for the Lord. Prescribed by David. And meanwhile, you got trumpets being blown for that ark. I guarantee not only did you see the gold, because Solomon would carry this on too. Not only did you see the gold of the city lighten up when you're far away. I can imagine how far you heard this music for God. I'll tell you the cheap imitation they have today. When you hear Satan's music being blared out of windows. That is a cheap, loud imitation, the anti-music of what was going on during David's time. And I guarantee you, you didn't walk up to David and say, that's too loud. You didn't like it? Tough. Get out of Jerusalem. You mentioned what our holy voices are going to sound like in heaven. I don't think it's going to be little piping little voices. Glory to God. Oh, Lord. I think we're going to be out loud, full of right chorus, holy voices. And Obadiah and Jehiah were doorkeepers of the house. You say there's two different sets of men. The first crew and the second crew. I mean, they didn't do it for 24 hours. And were they two at a time? If they're two at a time, they would have 12-hour shifts. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So, and guess what? Where are they standing? They're standing at the door, aren't they? Behind that door, isn't it the Ark of the Covenant, correct? Did not Jesus say, I am the door, correct? Do you see the picture of the empty of the tomb? They put Jesus in that tomb. They sealed it with a, with a rock that nobody can go through. But my high priest can go through. Matter of fact, my high priest rolled that rock away and stood on it. Hi, right, guys. There's a picture of the tomb being sealed. No one can go in and having a guard outside that tomb. With God between the mercy seat in there dead. And three days and three nights later, it came out alive. Isn't that interesting? But this, there's Jesus Christ.